My name is Mustafa Mansour, and uh, the demo or the presentation today will be around uh, uh, data center mobility, private data center mobility specifically. So, probably we'll do it the old way. We'll do it through the keys over here. <coughs> so, what customers want to do, just a high level introduction about data center mobility, they want to uh, uh, build multiple data centers and make it look like one big logical data center for their, for their customers or the services that they provide. But when you do that, you face a couple of challenges. For example, what kind of transport network you should use? Is it MPLS or IP? What your service provider uh, supports? There are multiple solutions that are available today for, to do DCI and LAN extensions and connect multiple data centers together. But you have to think about some factors uh, in order to choose the right technology. So transport de dependent is one of the factors. What kind of core you are running. Um, complex operations, which means how much configuration I can put there, how easy I can con configure it and troubleshoot it. When we look at a solution like VPLS, which uses a lot of pseudo wires, it uses LDP, MPLS, it be can become very complicated uh, for an end user, especially if your data center uh, expert, but you're not really um, an MPLS or a service provider kind of a guy. So uh, you're more, uh, you understand more about the storage, the VM, the visualization, but you're not that good with MPLS troubleshooting, with pseudo wires. Uh, in order to do multi-homing with, with VPLS, it can go up to, with EM script and the ICCP and some VGP and some few protocols there. I get customers who have 2,000 lines doing VPLS with multi-homing. So that's like a challenge when you want to operate your network and you, you want to troubleshoot it if something goes wrong. The other factor we have is bandwidth management. How, what kind of optimization do I do for unicast traffic, for multicast traffic? Some technologies, Ethernet over MPLS and VPLS, they just flood everywhere. It's like a dumb switch. You put it in the middle of the data centers in order to connect them. So it looks like one big switch sitting between the data centers, but it acts like a switch. Whenever you get a packet, you don't know the destination, you just flood everywhere. Another factor that we, we need to consider when we, uh, when we build the tunnels between data centers, uh, how is my spanning tree protocol is going to behave? Now I have multiple data centers and I'm extending the spanning tree domain to become a huge, uh, a huge domain between 10 data centers or maybe more, depending on your size as a company. So we support the legacy or the L2 VPN uh, technologies like VPLS and Ethernet over MPLS. But on top of that, we support a very exciting technology, which is OTV. Especially for enterprise customers, we see a lot of momentum with, with OTV. Uh, it's, it runs on top of IP, very easy to troubleshoot. I will go today on the configuration and uh, some enhancements that we are doing on ASR 1000. But it comes with the built-in all the drawbacks that we saw with the other technologies, we built it in the technology of OTV itself. So right out of the box, once you configure it, uh, just a few, few configuration lines, and you will have things uh, that are built in like multi-homing. So when you have two ASRs sitting on the edge of your data center, they're gonna figure out who's the uh, active, who's the standby, they're gonna do active, active, and load balance the VLANs between them. Without any extra configuration, uh, different uh, than VPLS and, or other technologies that, you, that what we consider legacy technologies. So spanning tree is another big thing with OTV. We do spanning tree blocking. So we block the PBDUs so they don't go across. So if your data center is down, um, the spanning tree convergence will not be affected uh, on the other data centers. It's within, the failure happens only within your data center. Uh, Multicast optimization is also available built in in the technology. One big thing that we have with OTV as part of the technology is the control plane. As I mentioned, VPLS will flood everywhere when it tries to learn new MAC addresses because it, like, it looks like a switch. With OTV, we leverage the layer three intelligence, the ISIS protocol, and we make it built in inside the OTV protocol itself. So we avoid all the loops. We know about the adjacency, where are the other nodes, because of the ISIS enhancements that we have within OTV itself. So this is just a high level about the technology and probably most of you are familiar with, uh, with OTV by now.
So in, in my demo, I want to show two things. The first one is kind of basic. Uh, I'm going to have different data centers physically apart from each other, separated by a layer three core network to simulate a service provider, uh, which is the common case for most customers. So you have two data centers, and we are going to move the VMs across the data centers using the OTV tunnel that we built between on, uh, on top of SR1000. Uh, I'm going to talk about some new enhancements like Lisp. We also support Lisp with OTV. So I want to say what it does for route optimization. Um, another scenario that we are going to have today is data center migration. Uh, sometimes we get customers who build a new data center, but it runs on a different VLAN set. So you may run your own VLAN. <coughs> Let's say it's VLAN 100 to VLAN 200. You have a whole range. But when you merge with another company or you, you have a disaster recovery data center, so it may run a different VLAN set, um, VLAN 300 to 400. So how would they work together if you want to move the machines? So we need some kind of translations. And we are very powerful when it comes to switching capabilities. We have EVC framework on ASR1000. So we are able to do a lot of VLAN translation and a lot of manip VLAN uh, tag manipulation. We're going to talk about that uh, in the next two slides. On top of that, the OTV, the LISP, um, the switching capabilities and VLAN translation, you can also add IPsec and get VPN. So if you're concerned about layer three encryption, you want to make sure your data centers are uh, communicating through encrypted safe tunnel, then you can add IPsec on top of the same, uh, on top of the other technologies on the same box. So this is the basic typology. We have two data centers, as I mentioned. Um, this addresses are for the VMs. We are adding a branch over there, uh, the ISR branch. Uh, basically, it just has a completely different address. We are going to access one of the media servers over here based on, on uh, the IP address of the media server. And then we are going to move the machine across data centers, even though that they are completely separated. So today, most customers, they can move the machine the machines on different UCSs within the same data center because they control their data center and all the routers and switches that are running within that data center. But when you go across data centers, then you will need something like OTV. So let me actually switch to the vCenter. So the machine we are trying to access it's 21.11, and I will show it to you in a second, but just making sure there is connectivity. That's the same address that we have here in the URL. So that's the machine, the same IP address, as you can see from the, uh, from the video or even from the ping over here. the screen is a little too big. So it takes about 30 seconds. And you're going to see a complete full move for that machine from one data center to another. You can do the same thing um, across different, like a long distance between the two data centers. We are doing it here between uh, in San Jose, both data centers, east and west of the, uh, San Jose. So they're like two miles apart. But you can do the same thing across a long, very long distance. So uh, I have a ping here. I want to show ex you exactly how many packets we lose, which actually is going to be impressive. Oh, so it's. Since the, uh, since the video stopped, let me repeat it one more time. Just one second. 
so I can put it in loop. So I don't have to do it manually every time. Yeah, so keep an eye on the, on the ping. Last time it's a small screen, so we, we couldn't see the packet loss and it got completed very quickly. So I want to do it one more time so you guys can see it. So this is a typical thing that customers do within the data center. But here we can do it across different data centers, separated by layer three. So you can use the same thing if you're doing disaster recovery, if you're doing uh, data center migration or consolidation. So we got a lot of customers who want to do the, the VM, uh, the hot move. Wow. wow, actually, so it's, we don't even miss any of, uh, any of the packets. Usually it's around one packet loss, mm -hmm. but since they are very close, actually we didn't miss any of the packets today. So is this just using OTV, or is Lisp layered on this? It's using OTV for now, but I, I want to tell you what we plan to support. Actually, it's available in 3.9, so uh, we have Lisp support. Uh, you can do the same thing that we did with OTV. We can do it with Lisp, uh, Lisp mobility across subnet, ASM mode. We also do Lisp and OTV both together, and I'm going to explain what's the benefit you get from that. So on the same routers here, if you want, you can have Lisp encapsulation. You can add the Lisp functionality. The reason people or customers want to add Lisp is usually you have a triangle problem. When you move the VM, the branch will still uh, send the traffic to the old data center based on the layer 3 routing information. And the old data center here will tunnel it through the layer 2 OTV tunnel. So what you want to get is path optimization, English path opt optimization. So you can add Lisp and it will give you direct communication between the branch and the data center. Is everyone here familiar with what Lisp is and how it works? Oh, OK. So, so in this example, uh, how would your customer typically have their, your storage configured? Because, because your storage is another problem. I, I can see how you're moving the, the front end IP address that's customer facing. But the storage, you know, if that's an iSCSI or something, or if it's, it's a, not it's local a, storage here. We actually have NFS. It's, uh, uh, okay. it's shared storage. It's not local to the hard, to the hard disk. If you want to do hot move, if you're doing cold move, it really doesn't matter. So as it moves, is is still pointing to the storage at the other location? Yes. Okay. So I see you're saying use Lisp for ingress optimization. If you want to use it with OTV, yeah. then the use case is yes, it's ingress optimization. Okay. And you'd recommend doing that, so you'd still see OTV as maintaining the IP address, and then use Lisp for ingress optimization. So that yeah. gives you hitless failure. This gives you, it gives you a peace of mind. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry. Like we get a lot of customers who actually are migrating from one data center to another. Yeah. Complete migration. Yeah. So over a period of six months or nine months, they want to move all the VMs. Yeah. The problem is you don't know which VMs you're moving yeah. for this week. Mm -hmm. You can move a VM that's completely independent of the rest, yeah. or you can move a VM that still needs to talk to the uh, to the other VMs or the what rest of the cluster. What you're saying then is you're going to use your OTV to move the machine from A to B, and then the data is going to trombone, and then Lisp will catch up a minute or two later, and then bring the ingress path through it. Lisp will take just a few seconds, right. maximum two ping loss or three ping loss. That's all. So, so we're talking about two to three seconds extra. Okay. The first time. So the OTV is only there thing. to support the V motion traffic, really. Sorry. The, the OTV is only there to support the V motion traffic if you're using Lisp. Correct. And to make sure that all the heartbeats can go back to the... Uh, but in the migration. Cause in the migration. Yeah, if there is an application and there is heartbeats, it can go back to the original data center. Yeah. Can the list be provisioned by the systems administrator? Or is that something that needs to be in conjunction with the network team? Lisp is completely transparent to the end machine, to the VMs. Yeah. So uh, you just have it on the edge router over here, on the ASRs. And of course, in the in the branch. Right. I mean, what I'm getting at is there a mechanism for self provisioning list? It is self provisioning. It is self provisioning. Well, once you, once you turn it up, it will. 
It will monitor the EID. When it detects the EID in the local VLAN, it will signal forward to the proxy member. So really, in this scenario... There is a mapping server similar to DNS, so yeah, it works in, in a similar way. So to do VM mobility, though, you don't technically even need... I mean, I've seen this demo done before without OTV, right? I mean, VM mobility from Lisp can do all so of this. So Lisp has two modes. Yep. The first mode is ASM across subnet mode, yep. which means that you can move VMs on a layer yep. three. Yep. The problem with that is what I was mentioning here. If I am a customer and I'm moving all the VMs, I don't know whether this VM needs any, <coughs> has any dependency to the other VMs back in the older center. Right. So even though that I may move it on a layer three, but in reality there may be some layer two or heartbeats that are going on and right. I still need to extend my layer two. So customers just extend layer two to get a peace of mind so they don't have to worry about each VM they are moving. Right. Whether this VM is independent or would it need to communicate back to the cluster or the database server or some other server that's running on the old data center. So just for peace of mind, have both of them together. Have OTV tunnel to uh, move the VMs, have Lisp to have path optimization between the branches and the, the VM that you're moving. Uh, one more, um, actually two more features I want to talk about in a minute or two. Uh, one of them is, is, a, is a, 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 something new on ASR 1000, so it's not available on other platforms and I want to highlight it. It's a VLAN translation. So let me just first show you the configuration that we have for uh, ASR 1000. Here I'm adding a third data center. So I have ASR 1001, I'm adding a full data center. This is the configuration that goes in ASR 1001. So you can look at this versus the 2,000 lines of BPLS with EM scripts to get the multi-homing, to get the optimization, the spanning tree, the access list filtering, all this stuff are built in here. So you can make a comparison how easy this is, this is for a customer who just wants to under, he knows IP, he wants to troubleshoot OTV and something that works on top of IP, not LDP and pseudo wires and multiple tunnels. So this is much simpler, of course, as you can see. Uh, one new feature that we have is adjacent server. So even we make it much simpler by we are waiving the multicast requirement on the core. So even now your data centers, they can just communicate on top of the multicast core or unicast core. It really doesn't matter. So we are simplifying the configuration a lot compared to uh, other legacy uh, VPN technologies. So let me tell you about the new features. Oh, one of them is IPsec. So with your OTV tunnels, if you, you're going through a service provider or some core network that you don't trust or you have some, uh, um, uh, you have to abide to certain certifications, security, so uh, you need to have an um, IPsec or some kind of encryption, we do support IPsec and GetVPN on top of ASR, on top of OTV, from the same box. What I want to talk about is VLAN translation. Actually, that's the point of this slide here. Uh, <coughs> A lot of customers when they, let's say they merge with another company or they recently did an uh, acquisition for another company. So they have two data centers or multiple data centers and each one of them is running its own VLAN set. So you need to have some kind of translation in order for these data centers to talk, even if you are sending OTV. So instead of going for a two box solution where you have to get an, an extra switch or an, another router that can do the VLAN manipulation, we actually support this feature with OTV with ASR 1000. So in this example here, we have a data center, a new one that uh, we added for disaster recovery or because of a merge with another company. It runs on a VLAN 22 and the other data centers, the old ones are VLAN 21. Instead of going and reconfiguring all of them or add another box to fix the problem, what we do is VLAN manipulation within ASR itself. So that's the configuration, it's one CLI. That's all you need actually, in one data center. So you don't need to touch the other data centers, just one CLI in one data center and your problem is solved here. Uh, so let me explain it, we do a rewrite. If you are familiar with EVC framework, the Ethernet virtual circuit, so we are leveraging that on ASR 1000. We do a rewrite for the VLAN tags, we translate one to one. So let's say we're getting a VLAN 21 uh, or getting a VLAN 22. Actually, this is VLAN 22. We are translating to VLAN 21. So, uh, 
how would the well one is that same that same uh, nomenclature and syntax available on and seven k and if not how would you implement this on uh, ot john seven k? What I'm oh. she, she didn't get that. So what I was <laughs> saying here. <laughs> she wants you to speak up. <laughs> Siri's listening. So what I was saying here that let's say this is an X seven K data center. Yeah. Uh, this may be ASR 1000, this is ASR 1000. Mm -hmm. So all, you don't need to go and reconfigure all the centers. No, I so you don't have to worry I about this 7 key here. You can just go into ASR and do the CLI there. It's going to do the translation. No, I, I get that. But uh, is there uh, this consistent CLI? In input? Say I want to, I have ASR everywhere else, and then um, I'm in a Nexus 7K where I have to do this. Uh, uh, we, we look, the, look up the, the rewrite right option, I believe yeah. it's a roadmap for Nexus 7K. I'm not sure, don't take my word. So what you have to ask here is we're seeing folks. new features introduced for, for OTV in the SR1000 platform ahead of where we're seeing it in the 7K platform. No, no, it's not a, it's not a part of a head. It's, it depends on the use case. Uh, Next 7K will have features that ASR doesn't, and ASR will have features that Next 7K doesn't. Uh, it depends on the use case. ASR is a data center, uh, data center edge. Yeah. So we have a lot of features that we are leveraging. Um, that runs it typically in a one kind of environment or that is the data center edge. So this okay. feature, a router feature, they don't exist on, on next 7 k uh, It just happened that EVC is part of the framework that we support. Mm -hmm. Our router is also used by service providers. So we do a lot of VLAN manipulation as a PA router. No, I think so we are leveraging that for OTV as well. Yeah, no, I actually prefer doing data center connect outside of the 7 k it's actually, it's actually good to see it kind of emerging and hitching up as OTV support is brought in the platform. Yeah, so we supported phase one of OTV back in 3.5, mm -hmm. uh, which is more than a year. And uh, now we are doing the phase two, where we have the list, we have the adjacent server, we have the VLAN manipulation, we have a lot more features that go with OTV. Question. One real world thing I've run into is, um, I, I occasionally do Nexus training and also consulting. One thing I've run into is that customers don't understand that Spanning tree isolation does not mean spanning tree defensive measures. And that once you do storm control and cop and things like that, even when running OTV. So I have a uh, bank customer where we had some superficial design review and the message about that didn't get received. And the 7K 10 gig network in the shiny new uh, data center took out the soup too on the old data center. Are, is there any plan to implement uh, sort of automated automatic OTV defensive measures to sort of mitigate any standing tree storm that happens uh, in one data center. We have a storm control. Right, but I mean automated. When you turn on OTV, you get something or a one command type defense, something like that. Not right now. We'll definitely look into it, but it's not right now. It's not available right now. Yeah, it was just a thought they didn't. Uh, so oh, what I want to highlight here Oh, I actually went. Okay. This is my last slide. Okay. It's just what the key takeaways to remember about ASR 1000 as a DCI. We are aggregated service router. That's what ASR stands for. We aggregate services. That's what the router is good at. And we do it with a very good performance. So uh, basically, you can have all your WAN features, the data center edge features. On top of that, you can have the DCI from one box. On top of that, you can have some enhancements like LISP for ingress optimization. You can have layer three encryption on the same box. You can have switching capabilities where you can uh, uh, manipulate the VLAN tags. And we are very powerful, by the way. We can do uh, a VLAN uh, manipulation. We can push one or two headers. We can translate one to one, one to two, uh, two to one. So many options and many flexibility uh, that we can, you can get with ASR1000 when it comes to, to VLAN manipulation. So uh, you can do all that from one box. So, Imagine how many features you can have, and all of them work smoothly um, with a very good performance. Real quick on the VLAN translations, can that push and pop of the tag, can that be going into other tunneling mechanisms? So, could be going into MPLS pseudo wires or DPLS or anything else, or is it just OTV north? We can do v manipulation uh, with VPLS. It's part of EVC framework. So, mm -hmm. if you're familiar with 9K or 7600, it's the same framework. So uh, if you want to apply it for VPLS, we do that. Uh, if you just want to have it as a standalone bridging, so if you want to have two ports or multiple ports, as just a switch. So you can configure that on any layer three port, and you will make it look like layer two. There is no switch modules. 
All the features, and by the way, I'm talking about here, are all implemented on the QFP, quantum flow processor. So there is no extra modules for anything. This is built in inside the router itself. And that's why you get very good performances on the QFP. Uh, but you can leverage it for many, many, many features. VPLS is one of them.